A day? A day. Hot dogs are iconic here in the States, uh, specifically in the city that I call home, Chicago. So I got to thinking, why? You know, how did the Chicago style hot dog become a thing? How did the hot dog get the name hot dog? You know, where was it invented? Uh, that sort of thing. The hard hitting questions that the people need to know. I was lucky enough to have been given master level clearance to peer inside the city's, really the entire country's, premier hot dog company's facilities, Vienna Beef. So we're gonna take a little field trip over to Vienna Beef HQ to get learned on a little hot dog history. Then we're gonna head over to the factories to get walked through the life cycle of a hot dog from meat to link. I'm sitting here with Tom McGlade, the Senior Vice President of Marketing and E-Commerce here at Vienna Beef. Uh, Tom's gonna, gonna answer some of my questions about hot dogs here, give us a little bit of a lesson on the history of Vienna Beef and you know the importance of the hot dog in the city. So Tom, thanks, thanks for being here. Glad to be here. I guess the, the place that would make most sense to start is the, the origin of the hot dog and how, where, where did it come from? How did it make its way to Chicago? How is it a Chicago thing even? So Vienna Beef got its start in 1893 at the World's Fair Columbian Exposition, which was a huge undertaking that the city of Chicago uh, took on for the world, really. Mm -hmm. And people from all over the world came, 20 million people, and two Austrian immigrants came who were really the founders of Vienna Beef to sell their sausages at the World's Fair. It was such a hit that they ended up opening a factory store uh, a year later. The World's Fair was in 1893, Vienna Beef opened, or the first- Started Vienna... in 1893. Wow. So that was really like a first hot dog stand when you think about it. What are the what are the origins of the hot dog? Uh, a lot of people credit it to Germany because the city of Frankfurt is where the Frankfurter oh, was kind of okay. launched. Okay. Uh, Wien is short for Vienna, and a wiener is another name for a hot dog. So it could be argued that either Austria or Germany were the founders of the original sausage. I'm kind of curious about, like, I kind of know the answer, but for those who might not know, what's the the anatomy of a Chicago dog and sort of where did it get its pieces from, you know? Sure. Well, it always starts with a Vienna beef, <laughs> pure beef hot dog. Right it's there. It's kind of the signature uh, start to make the sandwich correct. All right. But it's always put in a steamed poppy seed bun. That's important it's that it's steamed, different so it's squishy. And poppy seed. Okay. Okay. You know, it kind of differentiates itself from across different uh, buns in the United mm -hmm. States. And we then kind of importantly put it in the right order. So we start with putting on mustard and relish. Those are the first two things. In the relish, it's neon green. Neon green relish, yeah. which is uh, kind of um, unique to Chicago. Super. Yep, yeah, for yeah. sure. And then the yellow mustard gives it kind of a zing. Um, then there's tomatoes and pickles go mm -hmm. on next. Mm -hmm. uh, both kind of slivers of sure. each. And then um, on top of that, we put sport peppers and celery salt. Now, sport peppers, are the, it's like a kind of like it's like a smaller jalapeno. I'm it's hotter than uh, jalapeno. It's, it's not a um, serrano though. It's, it's like it's, somewhere it's, in between. It's made in uh, a unique area of the United States that is harvested only um, with our knowledge. Okay, because okay, that's that's funny you say that because I've actually looked at like farmers markets and I've always wondered what pepper it is. So mm -hmm. maybe I'll be privy one of these days. But right. until then, you were talking about how Maxwell Street is this 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 important street in Chicago that's known for sort of um, boosting up the hot dog and, and housing a bunch of different immigrants from all over the world and how each immigrant kind of brought their piece to build what is now the Chicago style hot dog. Ethnic backgrounds brought a different piece to the Chicago style hot dog. The Germans were kind of famous for bringing the mustard and the dill pickle, mm -hmm. uh, the Greeks, the onions and the tomatoes, and the Italians, the peppers and the relish uh, that all kind of combined to become this great product. Notably though, no ketchup. <laughs> and what we really say is tomato is already on the sandwich, okay. so there's no need to have another uh, tomato-based product. Plus, tomato uh, ketchup is sweet, and it adds a little too much sweet right. to the The relish product. is already kind of, am I wrong? The it's green sweet. relish? It's a little sweet. It it's is. It's like a sweet neon green relish. So we kind of think it's the perfect mixture of sweet and hot. Um, crunchy and soft yeah. and uh, obviously flavorful. After Tom schooled us in the way of the dog, he showed me around the Vienna offices. The spot is half office, half museum. I mean, it was packed full of vintage hot dog themed knickknacks and a bunch of historical memorabilia from years past. A big section of the building was dedicated to storage, which kept huge metal tubs for brining giant pieces of beef, a repair station for hot dog carts, and even a replica Vienna beef truck from the 1930s. Thank you. 
from the offices, we drove down the street to the factory, and it was there that I met with Mike to walk me through the life cycle of a hot dog. I'm sitting here today with Mike Carlino, Senior Vice President of Operations here at Vienna Beef. He's about to give us a tour of the factory. Let's, let's do it. Let's go do it. That was good. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> Force is not strong with me. Come on, let's go. All right. <laughs> So this is our bulk meat trimming area. Right. We have a pretty significant deli meat business. The advantage to this is not only we, we have this business that we sell and make product, but we also use the trim. The trim that comes off of these muscles of meat can provide us with a very high quality fat trim that is used in the manufacture of hot dogs. And being able to control that quality allows us to make really, really good sausage. And hey, it looks like these guys are equipped with uh, some pretty insane uh, some tools here. We got a, what is it, like a hook and a big old, like, what do you call those? Yeah, like Middle Eastern they have skimitars or something? <laughs> <laughs> well, they're specialized butcher knives, okay. and they keep them very sharp, but at the same time, they're using that uh, meat hook to allow them to keep the piece of meat steady, but also position it up on the, uh, conveyor belts. They process anywhere from 40 to 50,000 pounds a day. A day? A day. Can we go from bulk meat, where are we going next? So we're gonna to go to the grinding area grinding next. Grinding area, cool. Oh. Is this is where the life cycle of a hot dog starts? Yes. This is what we call our grinding area. All right. We take two basic components, sausage manufacturing, lean meat and fat meat, and combine them into formulation that allows us to make a hot dog. A secret formulation. Yes. All right. <laughs> so if you take really, really good lean meat, domestic fresh lean meat, yes. and combine it with really good fat meat, you have the building blocks that you can work off of to start making sausage. Right. So we have two grinders, one for fat, one for lean. Yeah, that's and then there's mixers. These are actually called mixers. That's what makes the formulation. Yeah. And that's where it dumps over there and then it, it'll come down and yes. mix it. Yes. Look at that, that's crazy. And then the guys will take these buckets, they're filled up with the, the formulation, and then it goes into another area for processing so it can be made into a hot dog. How you doing? All right. You're one thing that I noticed at the factory is that Mike literally knew everybody. I mean, I asked a handful of employees how long they'd been working at the plant, and the shortest amount of time I heard was 20 years. Vienna Beef seems to have put together a strong team of hardworking hot dog artisans, which hot dog loving Chicagoans should be thankful for. From the grinder, the meat is transferred to basically a giant food processor. As the meat churns, more ingredients are emulsified into the mix, then transferred to a very impressive link forming machine. This factory makes sausages of all shapes and sizes. Here, the link machine is making sausage with a cellulose casing. The cellulose casing is permeable, meaning smoke can pass through it, which is important for the next step in the hot dog creation process. You'll see why in a sec. Vienna also makes sausages with natural casing, aka cleaned and sanitized sheep intestine. There are very few companies in the world who turn out perfectly uniform natural casing sausage at the volume that these guys do, which again was very impressive. <laughs> Sheep casing, the natural casing hot dog will always have a, a more pronounced stamp. Gotcha, okay. Each smokehouse is regulated by a, a computer that regulates the whole cooking cycle. Temperature, humidity, uh, smoke. There, up above each smokehouse is a smoke generator. At certain cycles of the cooking process, it'll take and force smoke into the whole atmosphere It'll go in and out during the course of the, uh, the cooking process. This has got to be the warmest room in the whole factory. It is. Yeah. <laughs> oh, except the boiler room. Oh, okay. <laughs> Every hot dog has its own cook cycle based on its size and length and weight. And if it's a Polish weight. or different right. kinds of smoke or the same wood chips or what? Everything that we use What kind is, of wood is it? Is uh, hickory. Hickory, nice. It smells great. After the sausage is stuffed, the links are transferred to the smokehouse or I guess more like smoke chamber. So spooky. From here, the product goes two different directions. 
natural casing hot dogs will go to a special cooler for chilling and then they'll go into packaging. Skinless hot dogs will go into a special uh, chilling cabinet that forces very cold water, showers them, brings the temperature down very fast and then it can go in back in the packaging. Gotcha. Okay? So you gotta chill it down really quick for safety. Yes. Once the dogs have been smoked, the natural casing dogs are left alone, but the cellulose casing dogs are transferred to this hot dog machine gun-like mechanism. It's just gonna peel away the layer of cellulose, leaving the perfectly shaped hot dog ready for consumption. The dogs are then wrapped, packed, and sent off on their adventure to your favorite hot dog stand. This is where we're, what we call our shipping accumulation area. And the fellas take each product, put, build a pallet, and then the forklift driver will take the pallet, scan it, move it into finished goods so it can be shipped out. Shipped out. All right, so we're in the tasting room now. Uh, Mike, you know more about this than I. What, what do we got going on here? So every day um, we, at, at 10.30, we take various samples of products that we made the day before. Mm -hmm. And the folks up in our quality assurance area, they cook product and they also measure it for all kinds of different uh, criteria. And then they lay it out for sampling so that various managers and production managers can, can come up and see what they made the previous day. So it's kind of it's kind of cool because we, we kind of got to see the birth and the righteous yep. death of the dogs <laughs> and the bullshit. So grab a fork right. and, and uh, um, don't be shy. Our natural casing hot dog is the classic. Is iconic Chicago. So okay. I would start with the natural. We're gonna go for it. The snap. The snap is pronounced. Great snap. That's unbelievable. The, the snap is, is is unparalleled. And if you put really good meat ingredients into this product, you're gonna get a really good beefy, clean tasting hot dog. It's almost like. Comically delicious and crunchy. <laughs> and then there's also that subtle smoke flavor that's yeah. attached to it as well. Which is cool because as we walked through that room, I totally, totally picked up on that. It's almost like this, like, just by smelling it, I knew it was like the, the spice blend that yeah. you guys use or something like that. So, well, what a way to, what a way to kick it off. And we got some chili here and everything too. You guys have full sweet. Yep. This is every day at 10.30? Every day at 10.30. All right, Mike, well, thank you so much for taking us through the life cycle of a dog. Um, you have a really cool factory. You do, guys do great work here. And well, thank you. We're a, right. we're a Chicago icon. And yes, I you are. <laughs> and I appreciate you spreading the word on us. So. Of course, the gospel, the good word. <laughs> it's the least I can do. do that. Thank you. We could not end the tour without stopping at the Vienna Beef Factory store, which happens to be conveniently located right across the street from the factory itself. If you want a classic Chicago dog, this is the place to get it. I mean, talk about freshness. The dogs you get from this joint were likely walked across the street from the factory to this place. As a guy who grew up in the Chicagoland area, this experience was special. To have the chance to work with a legacy company like Vienna Beef and learn more about the food history of the city was cool, it was priceless. I hope that you all enjoyed the video, or at the very least learned a few fun facts that you could drop at a party. To the entire Vienna team, thank you so much for blessing us with your hot dog knowledge and letting me peek into your operation. And I will see all of you omnivores next time.